this time I'll go in the Chrome. So I'm still on the same scenario, okay, test case. So I'll do HP, HP, login. Now I do, uh, you guys can see, right? Okay. Um, I have to tell the software basically to look for something unique about the super user login, right? So what can I use from here on the, on the page? What would be different for super user versus dealer user versus anybody else? What is it? But how, when you are doing manually, right? You are saying, okay, super user homepage is displayed. But what does it mean, right? What you're gonna verify on the page that will tell you it's a super user homepage. Uh, what if I, there are two Herschels in the system, one is a dealer and one is a super user. It's not gonna work. So this one, right? You have to look for something unique. So this one probably is something unique about it for them because if I'm a dealer, I will see my dealer homepage, this one. But if I'm admin, only I can see my admin homepage link on the page. So you have to tell the script, okay, look for admin homepage link so that you can say, yep, I'm on the right homepage or not, okay? So that's something you have to tell the software. So let's see how we can do that, okay? So I'm going to start recording here. This time I'm going to put the username, password, click login. Right? Now I would tell, make sure this link is present on the page. So this box is very important, okay? Um, and there are a bunch of things here. You guys played around with the stopping it, right? Um, let's take a look at what are the other things here, right? So here, there is an object spy here, okay? By the way, can you guys tell, is the, what is this? Is this a button or what is it? Okay, so are you guys sure, 100% sure it's a button? How can you be sure it's a button? Okay, so if I do it right click, and let's say inspect element, right? Let's see what it does. So can you tell me now what, what, what type of it is? How can you tell it's a button? Are you looking at this attribute? So what's in the HTML we talked yesterday, right? So what type of uh, element it is? I guess you guys never looked at uh, what are the different elements in that TML. So there is a button, there is a link, there are text boxes, check boxes, radio buttons, all those things. But you have to master the what type of element it is. Okay. Uh, now this one is clearly not a button. If I see it and I say, nope, it's not a button. Okay. So go back to the W3 schools, right? Or look at our review, review the what, what we give you, right? It's there. So this ones are links, okay? The way you can tell is this A is an anchor, which is a link, which is used for links in a TML, okay? If it's a button, then it will say it's a button or input type is equal button or submit, something like that, okay? So you have to master the HTML skills, okay? If you want to be automation tester, you have to know what type of control it is, okay? All right, so now either you can do that or within the automation tool, there is a object spy, okay? So object spy, you can use it. So this guy is more like a James Bond, right? So anything, it knows, it can tell you what type of uh, control you are dealing with on the page, okay? So as soon as I click on this object spy here, this uh, hat type of symbol, click on there, and then I click on this uh, hand icon, okay? 
now I can go to any control and it can tell me what type of control it is. Okay, so if I come here and it tells you it's a link. Okay, so it's a link and uh, what is name and those things. So remember, HTML control has a bunch of properties, right? All the controls. So I click over there, right? And it will. I can navigate the properties here. It says it's an admin homepage. Okay, so I'm on that control. It's the text is this one. Uh, and it's uh, inner text is a bunch of things, right? Or the name is admin homepage. What's the link name, right? So that's what the admin homepage is a link name. And uh, those things. What is the ID of the control? So that's the ID. So you can use either one, okay? So you can use the object file. If I go here on the logout page, right? Logout, so it will tell me, okay, what what type of control it is. Uh, actually, I logged out. Let's close this one. Open again, right? So if I come here and Oh, this one. So I can see what type of controls they are, right? Different, different ones. Okay. So sometimes now here somehow this one is not is not recognizing, but I can see other ones. Probably. What are this one? <clears throat> so this object spy is very helpful too. Okay. Um, it, it can also tell you what type of uh, content it is. So if I come back here, right? So at the bottom, right, there are a bunch of text here. It says it's a web element and there are, these are the text it's reading on the page, okay? So you can uh, see what type of element and control uh, it is and figure out what is uh, that you need to do, right? Now here, our goal is to identify, right? This link, right? It's, uh, it's, this link is present. So, so we looked at the object file. Now let's see how we can tell the software. So there is a concept called checkpoint in the software. Okay. So let's see if I click on that, I'll see a bunch of uh, different types of checkpoints. Okay. So there is a standard checkpoint. There is a text checkpoint. There is a text area checkpoint, bitmap, database checkpoints. So what these are, um, <clears throat> so most commonly used are the standard checkpoint and text checkpoint. Okay. So if you ever want to verify the text like welcome Herschel, then you can you can use the text checkpoint. But if you are looking for the star uh, like any controls like links, uh, text box, and those things. Those are those falls under standard checkpoint category. Okay. So what it means is, let's say, uh, let me go back here and uh, uh, let's start over with the test. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna do this time. So I'll record again. And let's say we, as a login, right? We want to verify this text. Welcome Herschel is present, right? So I'll go here and I'll use the text checkpoint. I'll click on it, okay? And it will change this icon. So any text I click, it will capture it. So if I click on Herschel, so it will pop up this box, right? Checkpoint box. It says check that Herschel is displayed between welcome and auto repair financial. It will capture that, okay? Um, and it will check this value. Every time I run this test case, make sure Herschel is present, okay? So I'll click on okay, and I'll close out the browser, stop it, right? So let's see what it did to our script. So you guys recognize step one, steps two, step three. Now step four is a checkpoint. Now here it doesn't tell us the value, right? What is that is verified, okay? 
but I'll show you where you can go and check that value. Uh, but then the other steps are good. So let's let me run this as is for now, and then we'll come back and I'll show you where it actually stored that Herschel value, or how does it know it where where the value is. So I'll run it, click run, and see what it does this time. So now I'm seeing the green arrows, right? So I'm seeing here. The checkpoint is the important one, right? So it records checkpoint captured Herschel between welcome and auto repair financial. So it actually, when you run it, it, it actually compare the value which was there versus the when it whatever was displayed on the page during the test run. Okay, that's how it knows the pass or fail. So you are now instructing software to actually look for something valid so that you can pass or fail. Now, how do I know where, what, what value, uh, or how does it know, right? So this is a runtime value when it runs it. So where is the stored value? How does the software know what is stored where? So for this one, you can go to the resources, okay, and go to the object repository. So the what it does is uh, UFT tool. It creates the object repository of any controls that you are interacting with. Okay. So here we are interacting with uh, this box, text box, right? This ID, username, password. So it actually stores certain properties when you record it. Okay. It also captured the checkpoint, right? When you record it, you also put the checkpoint. So it captures the Herschel value and stores it somewhere. And it go, everything goes into object repository here. So let me open that up, see what it looks like. So here I have this uh, different thing, right? This text box and it stores certain properties of the HTML element. Okay. So it stored this one uh, for this one. Now important part is the checkpoint, right? This is our checkpoint listed here, okay? And here you should you will see what actually value is stored. And I can see it is it stored Herschel, so it, it is expecting it to match it with the Herschel on the page. Now, how can I tell it's uh, it's uh, comparing this value versus the actual value? Let me go and change it to Herschel 123, okay, in the repository. So now it is expecting Herschel 123 to be displayed on the page, okay. So now I'll go and uh, close this one, okay. I change the value, right, and I'll close this one. And if I run it, it's gonna fail my test case, okay. So now my test case is failed. So if I go back here, right? So it will tell us nice way. Text checkpoint captured this value, but we are expecting Herschel 123 instead. Okay. So this is uh, how the software works. I mean, different checkpoints. It captures during the record time and compares during the runtime, whatever value is used to. Okay. So if I go back, resources, object repository, and uh, okay, and I put it back, Herschel123 to Herschel. And run the same test case again. And this one, this time it should work okay. Now it passed again, right? All right, so let's do one more thing here. I'm going to record again, okay, this script. And I'll show you standard checkpoint as well, how it works, right? All right, click 
clicked on something so it didn't work so let me go and uh, re-record so we want we can verify this link right so at this time so previously i used check text checkpoint right to capture this one now i'm going to use standard checkpoint okay and i'll come to this link and make sure i click on the link and it will say page and link admin home page okay and i'll click okay <clears throat> If I can move this one, okay, doesn't let me move, but I'm gonna click OK, all right, and uh, close out my test. Make sure all your steps are correct, right? This one, this one, this one. I have admin homepage checkpoint, sync, and this one. Script looks good, so I'll go and run it. So this time it passed as well because it expect it was expecting checkpoint right so it recorded certain properties it compares during the runtime and been home page tax uh, and that's what it matches with the when you ran it right any question on the checkpoint so there are a few other checkpoints right we have let me go and go over quickly what those are So these are most commonly used 90 plus nine percent of the time you guys will use this right now text area checkpoint um, this is if you are using the windows application we are using the web base right so this one will not even work okay uh, bitmap so if you want to make sure the image is present then you can use the bitmap checkpoint okay uh, database checkpoint if you want to verify something in the database you can execute the query and verify it okay so that's where you use the database checkpoint and uh, finally the xml one right if you are verifying something in the xml file certain tags and those things are present then you can use xml checkpoint okay but these are the two most common ones okay 95 to 98 percent of the time you will use these two okay not the output value okay uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later but the checkpoint <coughs> Any question? All right, so you're gonna work, gonna work through it in studying the checkpoints. So what I want you to do is a couple of things, right? Um, let's do one thing. So what you do is, uh, <clears throat> so work through the checkpoints thing. Let me put this thing down. So obviously checkpoint right both standard and text checkpoint so record the script you wipe out and re-record again okay using both standard and uh, those checkpoints second thing would be object spy okay make sure you play around with the object spy see how you can use it all right um, and uh, analyze results so go and see why it passed or failed after you have the checkpoint uh, look for checkpoints. All right, let's work through that. The same test case, okay?
is everybody has it working checkpoint oh, you guys are working too okay standard work did you try the text okay <coughs> All right, those who are done, right? Um, with this one, so I got uh, some work for you guys. Okay, so you have to create the automation script for searching a dealer by dealer name. Okay, uh, partial name search. Uh, second would be the loan calculator. Uh, you can do the positive scenario. Okay, uh, you can do loan calculator. Negative scenario. Okay. And uh, create the automation script for those things. Now, here, I learned, uh, make sure you have a manual task written down. Okay, those that's the only one you can automate. If you never wrote down any of the tasks, 
you can't automate anything. Okay. So let's work through that. These four things. Uh, do one and show me. Tell me. Show me what first. First one. If you if you complete the first one. Okay. Then show me the second one. What you what you do in the second one. When, when you write the uh, step that just uh, the think through, right? What are you automating? Your manual steps, right? So make sure you have your how are you gonna test it? You still have to know manually, okay? Then only you can automate those things. If you if you never wrote down this test case, that means you can't automate. Well, I just okay. I was asking, do you type this in the UFC? If you already did it, right? Then you don't have to. You can just use it same okay. way. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, but make sure you figure out the checkpoint, right? What you're gonna verify at there. Okay, that is the important part for everything, for passing or failing. I know on the first the example we did. So this is the the one manual script. That's correct. So the uh, okay for that. Um, so make sure you write down manual step first uh -huh. before you create automation. Okay. Without that, you won't be able to create. It. So we have to go to the same step, like go to the run and I mean same step. The record. Yes. So go to the website. First of all, you put in piece of paper, right? How are you gonna test this manual? If you already did it, then it is fine. You can use it. But if not, then you have to work through it. I mean, if you want to discuss with your team, I mean, you can do that and work through one first and show me, okay? Before you move on to the second one, you show me if you, if you are done with the first one.
Um, one more thing, right? Um, so when you create this uh, script, right? Don't overwrite the login one that you have. You can always add a new test, like right click on the solution solution on the left side, say add test, okay? And select the GUI test, Q, whatever the, what is the name? Search dealer by partial name. And it will add a second test in the project, okay? So just keep on adding the, the test. So it will add second one here, right? So you don't lose your first one. Okay. How do you delete the test if you made a mistake and you did a new one? Um, so if you want to remove it, right, from the yeah. project, yeah. Uh, it, so when you remove it from here, right, uh, remove from solution. So it will only remove from the project. But if you if you want to really delete it, then you have to find the folder where it's stored and delete for the files. So it will tell you where it's stored here. So this is where it's stored in this directory. So you delete the login test one file and from the directory. I can't see like on the left side, I don't have the... So get familiar with the view, okay? So view solution explorer, view solution explorer will bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. 